1915, Reconstruction, the South is on its knees, America's in shambles in so many different ways, and you have this new wave of people in the labor force that are willing to work for nearly nothing to survive. I live in Los Angeles, so... <laughs> right? So, 1915, as this is happening, as, as you have this, this, this uh, uh, Reconstruction, you have, the, you know, the, the, the black poor, the white poor, the planter community, everyone's trying to figure out what to do next. He gave them an option. He said, okay, it's either us or them, right? We can either fall victim to them, because, you know, in 1866 was the very first Civil Rights Act. 1875 was the second, 1964 was the third. But in 1866 and in 1875, these Civil Rights Acts were they almost identical to the one in 1864. You know, no, no discrimination. So we, had, we saw two senators, the first African-American senators from Mississippi in the Senate. There was, there was a turning of the tide that poor whites saw, and they thought that they would be crushed beneath the feet of the very people they enslaved. And Griffith gave them an opportunity to capitalize on that. And he said, if you embrace this film, white supremacy as a means of self-preservation, we will win. We'll be on a side that will preserve us, give us posterity forever and ever and ever and ever. And this film come out in, in the second era of the KKK. The KKK had all but died in 1875. It rose to what, almost four million. Whoa! And this wasn't just people waiting around to hate and kill black skin. This was a lot of regular Americans. Wow! That just wanted to see their kids be able to eat. Mm. He gave them white supremacy as a as a as a tool for self-preservation. And you know what Woodrow Wilson said? No. What did he say? I'm sorry, but he said. He said, behold, there rose a great KKK, Ku Klux Klan, a veritable empire of the South to protect the Southern country. This is our president. As the film, the first film, screened in the White House 101 years ago. Wow. Today. So I bring it up to say is in Hollywood, our foundation is sand. We got to break new ground and pour new concrete. That's why I named it the birth of the nation. So we can birth a new nation of leadership. Exactly. Right? In politics, mm -hmm. so they can see this. And say, okay, I admit there was a problem. And nothing. The reality is, it's not. I didn't make a film that shakes a finger. Because the reality is, we've all been traumatized. Mm -hmm. All of us are feeling that trauma. The wound afflicts me as it afflicts anyone. One of you know, pink face, brown face. We're all be, uh, being affected by it. That's true. But I think that there's a genuine fear that in our in our hope for progress, that there will be an indictment. Whoa. That you'll walk out of the film and be like, oh. You know, I'm letting you guys know, anyone that's thinking about it, it's not a film about good black people and bad white people. Mm. It's a film that challenges you to think like a human being and to challenge the system that corrupted the people rather than the sociopathic behavior True. of a slave master. Mm -hmm. So I think this film, for that reason, has the possibility to heal because that's what we need. And that only comes from honest confrontation with our past. Right. Do we have, Do we have that right over here? That is the birth of a nation. I, I've been advised that given the high season, we cannot stay here all night. I think we're going to have to uh, reconnect at Nick and Teresa's vow renewal ceremony in a couple years, where we can continue the conversation. In the meantime, it has been an honor sharing the stage with you two gentlemen. Thank you so much for your time.